Okay, so here we are in Logic for the second time because the first time I messed it up. Oopsie. Luckily, I've learned how to switch these cameras now. So um, hopefully we'll have a little bit more variety as well of what's going on um, on the screen. But first of all, let's jump right in and we're gonna go into Serum. Serum, Serum, I hear loads of people saying. I thought it was Serum, but if I'm wrong, let me know in the, uh, in the comments. Okay, so we're going to make a riser today and um, first of all as you can hear I've just initialized the preset which you do up in the menu here and we are going to just stick with a simple saw wave at, at first add some unison probably about eight and detune them only a little bit if you're not used to um, Serum, then you'll know that it starts like 50% detuned. Um, so anything from down here is where you want to start. Okay, so we've started off there. We're going to turn oscillator off now and we're going to go to the noise. Pick whichever noise you want. I'm going to personally pick SH1 noise. It's just a simple noise generator. Now, most people would say, okay, go to your envelope and you, you know, you're going to pull your envelope so it has a gentle sub. Well, we're not going to do that in Serum because so, so the sound triggers from the start. Okay, and we want four bars for the rate. Okay, so nothing's happened at the moment because we haven't added that LFO anywhere. So we're just going to click on it, drag on it, and put it onto the level. Um, we want it from all the way down like this. And we want this a direct out sound. We don't want this to be um, affected by the filter or anything. Um, and we want it central. So let's just listen to it. Now we've got something like this. The only issue now is that we've got just white noise going up in level, but there's nothing changing to the timbre of the pitch. So uh, we're going to take the LFO and we're going to stick it straight onto the pitch. Put the pitch, I don't know, about there, third, third, third ish of the way. Yeah, third ish of the way. Now, when we listen to it, it should go up in pitch as well. It's possibly a little bit too much. <laughs> Let's take another lesson. Awesome. Okay, um, and we're gonna add a little bit of random phase to it. Not much, just a little bit. Just so that when we play it back, then it's gonna play it slightly differently each time. And I've also put it so that um, the pitch will change as well for where you actually play it on the keyboard. So we'll go back to our oscillator now. We've done most of the work already creating this LFO. So we're gonna put it onto the level and we're going to turn the level all the way up, pretty much. So now we can listen to it. Cool. Again, we want to put this on to the course tuning as well. And we can put this on to the semitone as well. Let's have a little listen to that. Cool. Uh, I'm going to bring that blend up a little bit, and I'm actually going to detune it a little bit more. Not maybe not that much. Okay, um, and we're going to pan this at about 35% that way. So now we've got a mid and we've got a side. Okay, we're going to go to this now because we've had a simple sine wave. Um, what we need is we need something that with a little bit more character and I'm just going to go by you see mess one that sounds interesting so we'll turn oscillator a off so we can listen to it and the noise sounds all right isn't it? oh nice okay so uh, we are going to use the second LFO uh, the rate for this, yeah, 
that's really really cool so all I did there was I took the second LFO and I changed the rates and I'm actually going to leave the trigger or the envelope up. I'll set it to envelope because now we've got a few sounds that sound quite good we're just going to do exactly the same to this sound though as we did the other one oh, maybe that's a bit much and um, this one we're going to pan same amount on this side um, and let's just add a little bit of randomness into it same with this cool and, and with that randomness it adds almost like um, a phase generator isn't it so we can turn everything back on again now I'm going to take our filter and uh, I'm going to take LFO 2 and I'm going to put it onto the cutoff. Um, if I was to just let this go now, it would filter all the way off and we don't want that. Um, and we just, we just want, we want this to affect A and that's it. Cool. Uh, we'll add a little bit of drive there. Maybe fan it up a little bit. Um, and we're also going to take LFO1 and put that onto the mix as well. Maybe from the start, we'll just take that all the way up. And now when we listen to it, cool. So there's a lot of variation now in that sound. And that's what we're after, we just have to variation. Um, I'm going to go on to uh, the hyper dimension. Usually I'll turn this on. You tune it a bit. Cool. Let's add a little bit of that dimension size as well. Um, now we're going to add uh, Chorus. I, I really like chorus. <laughs> I just put it on everything. Cool. So now it kind of almost sounds like it's in a space. A bit of a weird space, but it sounds cool. So we'll go with it. I'm going to put the compressor on. Um, I'm going to go into multiband. I'm going to need more mid range, at least to my taste. and reverb. Um, I personally like the plate, lots of people like the hall, um, just whatever you're comfortable with. A good mix, for most things, I would say reverb, anything between 25 and 30% is usually okay in, on sounds like this. And you can hear we've got that attack and the attack is coming from um, the filter and it's coming from the noise. Okay, so when we automated that noise there. Now this is a static, a static note, which means that when we add it, that note's gonna change um, and that can add, act as a drone. If you don't want it to act like a drone, then simply just add the LFO here. Um, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a third LFO. Um, so this comes in a little bit quicker. There we go. Something like that. Because it's all about variation. We want this to sound like a real sound, you know, a playable sound. And then we're going to take this and we're going to say that it comes up to four bars again. Um, we're going to get it to trigger and we want this to go onto the semitone. Okay, um, and we're gonna bring this an octave down. Cool, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's what I would do um, for creating the sound, the serum sound, or, you know, 
whatever you use I'll do one in massive as well um, at some point but here as you see I've got an audio track I'm just going to go into my files we're going to have a little look for a sound that we can manipulate just to add a little bit more realism as well to the sound because we're working with digital sounds here so I'll find this sound I'm going to take it from um, a sound that I've got for my new from a, a new library that's going to be coming out soon okay so I'm, I've decided that I'm going to take a sleigh bell sound okay so we've got a sleigh bell sound and uh, as we can hear the sleigh bell sound has that t -t -t sound okay so now what we want to do is we just want to take the attack so I'm going to take the attack I'm gonna come over to the region uh, oh, we don't need that and we're going to uh, first of all reverse it now we're just going to add a simple fade in and fade out because we're working with audio so we don't want this to clip okay just a small five milliseconds will be absolutely fine so we listen to that okay sounds quite cool um, and we want this obviously to go for at least a bar so I'm going to set this up to start here I'm going to press alt and drag okay and then I let go and it should be fine yeah and it's not too stretched now we can do anything we want to it so we're going to get the EQ and we want this we want the sound to have a bit of top end okay so you can hear there's no low, low stuff in there we don't really need to take anything out if you want to if you're using more of a mid-range or a low instrument for this because you can use subs and hits that works just as well and um, then you can do uh, I'm gonna go to my favorite saturator which is the Abbey Road saturator I'm gonna use the mono um, turn it to red because that's a little bit got a little bit more girth into the sound <laughs> girth okay so um, and I'm taking a little bit of that EQ as well out on the way out so the post EQ which is after the saturation happens so now if I play that sound and I'm just gonna just gonna do that okay so you can hear that top end sizzle um, and then we're going to create a MIDI region. Okay, I want this MIDI region to finish there. Okay, double click on it, and we're just going to command and draw a C in there. Why not? Okay, how it sounds. Cool. So we're nearly there. We want a little bit more variation though, don't we? Um, I'm going to turn this up to about 65. I think we can just push it a little bit more. Um, then I'm going to put chroma verb on it. For some reason it just sounds really good out of the box. Um, but I'm also putting chroma verb on before I put the next one on, which is this Pechneg uh, tremolo which I heard Sam in the interview in the last episode talk about. So um, he gave you a little bit of an overview for it, but we're gonna go to host. Uh, we're gonna add it to 16th note here, semi-quaver. Turn the shape into a saw, so it's a little bit more edgy. Uh, phase, we'll keep this the same. Symmetry, let's do that. Um, the depth, turn all the way up, so it's actually going right down into the canyon and back up again okay and um, that should give us a little bit more variation cool and we'll stick it we'll stick it on pan because pan sounds nice yeah there we are and this is still a bit thin we're going to go control command B uh, we'll call this low rise um, 
and we'll just put it on a new track. Okay, and we had to duplicate it like that because now we're gonna go and we are gonna go to the region again and we're gonna transpose it down by 12. Okay, and we're together. Sounds a little bit like that. Okay, we're gonna bounce this as well because what happens when you when you do something like this is it, it goes slightly out of time. Uh, okay, and we're gonna go rise high for this. So it's just slightly out of time, nothing too crazy. Okay, okay, now we can actually pan these. So one is here and one is there. Cool. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll bust these um, together. So create okay, it's track stack. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna just add a reverb. I'm not gonna rename the sum, um, but I will queue a little bit. Give it a little bit of a bump at 1K. Um, and take that chrome reverb and stick it back on there. Okay, and this one now I'm gonna go into dark room. Uh, the decay is going to be two seconds. The wet is going to be at 30%. Um, pre delay, 17%. There we go. I'm just going to pull the low end out. Okay, so this is the finished sound. There's just one more thing we need to do on the stereo out, which is uh, compress it a bit. And for this, I am going to go to the mix centric. Okay, stereo, because it's a stereo out. And we're not going to add too much. We're mainly just using this to get the level up. I think that's good um, and that is it guys so uh, yeah if you found this helpful please go below and um, click that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this please let me know um, I'll be probably making one a week from now on uh, maybe two a week if I say one a week and then you get one on a Wednesday as well then fab or a Thursday something like that it'll depend I work in the day so yeah, thanks guys. See you later.